Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my great privilege to introduce Dr. Carl Hammerschlag, a Yale-trained psychiatrist, speaker, internationally recognized author, grandfather, healer, and fly fisherman. He's one of the early pioneer leaders in integrating today's popular mind-body-spirit medicine. He's an expert in rapidly changing cultures who understands the importance of sustaining connections and building community. His unique insights and visionary skills help people and organizations to thrive. His experience working with Native Americans for more than 20 years profoundly changed and enriched his life. He has shared his journey in his three critically acclaimed books, The Dancing Healers, now in its 15th printing, The Theft of the Spirit, Healing Ceremonies, and two children's books. He can be accessed on the web at www.healingdoc.com. Please write that note down, www.healingdoc.com. He has what he calls Schlag Bites there, which is a blog, for those of you who like to read blogs. But I think after hearing him today, you're going to want to tune into that particular location frequently. He holds the highest award in spe professional speaking, the CPAE Speakers Hall of Fame Award, and is a 1998 recipient of the National Caring Award selected by the Caring Institute of Washington, D.C. for more than a quarter million nominations as one of the 10 most caring adults in America. He's a bridge builder, a pathfinder, and a visionary who inspires people to reawaken their spirit, celebrate their choices, challenge, changes, and connections. He's that rare combination of a dreamer and a doctor who will inspire you, challenge you to look at the familiar in new ways, here to help us celebrate our choices and changes and connections, Dr. Carl Hammerschlag. Well, so I was going to speak at about 9.45 and end at uh, 10.45. That leaves me 20 minutes, uh, which I assure you is what my children and grandchildren think is about 19 more minutes than I need <laughs> to say anything of significance. But after watching the award winners, I think it's true. 20 minutes is more than I need. I'm not going to tell you anything other than what it is that you've seen in, uh, in the award-winning presentations. And I'm honored to be here to uh, give you the opening address and remind me what it is that I am doing in healthcare. I say thank you. So, to all of you in APA, to your distinguished president, your new CEO, Gregor, the planning committee, and, uh, and some old friends here, I have not seen this many PAs in my presence at one time since I was responsible for behavioral health training for the physician assistant program we called CHMs for the Indian Health Service 35 years ago. And I am honored that uh, one of my students, my, you notice the sense of propriety I have, is uh, here in the audience today who said uh, the title of this presentation was The Future of Healthcare. I mean, can anything be drier and more nauseating? <laughs> I taught behavioral health from a community psychiatry perspective, how it is that we intervene, and not just in the symptomatic manifestations of mental disease, but how it is that we intervene in families and communities and do preventative community work. My PAs called our weekly sessions Hammer Time. What I want to talk to you about today is uh, the heart and soul of what it is that you're doing in healthcare. The nature of healthcare, as the Honorable Paul Rogers uh, has suggested, is getting less into health care, care, which is an important part of that word, and more into the nature of economics. Uh, we talk about the bottom line. We were talking about almost 50 million uninsured Americans, a national disgrace. We are talking about uh, the impossibility of access. Uh, these are difficult, difficult times. And what it does is it threatens to steal our joy, the heart and soul and spirit of what we do. 
none of us came into healthcare because of bottom line concerns. All of our preoccupation with this crap is reducing what it is that we do to an industry. None of us came into this because it's an industry. <laughs> came into healthcare because it's a ministry. A ministry, it touches the heart and soul of who we are and the award winners remind us of that legacy how it is that we come with open heart and to share the gift of what it is that transmitted to us with those people who place themselves in our hands. So I am not going to do a PowerPoint presentation on contemporary federal legislation. I'm not going to talk about technology, medical informatics, or the rise in litigation. I'm not going to talk about all of the challenges that change implies. I mean, you know all about that. I mean, you are single-handedly responsible for uh, providing health care to a population in which they would otherwise not be served. I mean, 50% of you are involved in primary care and emergency room care. We dramatically have too few physicians. My colleagues here in family medicine and emergency care will tell you that we are dramatically overworked. You will continue to be overworked. It's a difficult time. You are now staffing minute clinics and shopping malls and in supermarkets. Increasingly, you will be asked to fill the gap for those people who cannot find care elsewhere because they can't afford insurance, and increasingly you will be under the gun in an atmosphere that's increasingly litigious in this country. You know the challenges that you face. I want to talk to you today about how you retain the heart and soul of who it is that you are. That's what I want to talk about today in the 17 minutes I have remaining. <laughs> so I hasten to add, this is my opinion. I think my opinion is right. I know I'm speaking to a sensitive audience because I have watched what's happened here on the stage in the morning presentation. So get prepared to get schlagged. It's hammer time. <laughs> so let me tell you first, if you're going to survive in this atmosphere, if you are going to be able to retain the heart and soul of who you are, you've got to look at health from a different perspective than the one that most of us have been trained in, all of us. A model that's essentially dysfunctional, a model that says you treat people with diseases. We are well trained to deal with people with disease. I did not learn anything about health in medical school. Health was defined as the absence of disease. We are experts in intervention. The future of healthcare cannot be an intervention. We can't afford it. We are drowning in what it costs to provide interventional care. The future of medicine is in prediction and prevention. That's where the future is. And to do that, 